Hoop Saxon and more on the Donnie Sports 17 Network on YouTube. I need your Hoop Saxon. I just want your reaction. I can't get no satisfaction. I need your Hoop Saxon. Something I'ma go get it. At first it be all struggle, then it's all credit. See back in the day, getting on was mad hectic. Looking for my start in hip hop, like see the incest spark confused lit. I had talent and knew it, but had yet to prove it. Yo, I ran the Eight wins in the book. Eight more wins to go to an NBA title. Welcome to the 16. Welcome to the 16, 2010 Dallas Mavericks playoff run. We're at the halfway point of the playoffs uh, right now, and uh, let's a show of hands of who, going into the, the, the uh, series against the Lakers, you could expect a sweep. Now, personally, I didn't. I wanted this series to go seven games. I don't want it to be like the epic classic series that everyone was expecting. I, I'm glad the Mavericks won. I feel kind of cheated a little bit, though. I mean, I mean, the Mavericks played to their full potential, potential while the Lakers really didn't. And uh, if you're a Laker fan, uh, you, you should be disappointed and you should be ashamed of how the uh, Game 4 ended. In case you missed it, I mean, Mavericks won the game, 122 uh, to 86 over the Lakers, and more in detail about that later. But towards the end of the game, uh, Lamar, Odom, Lamar Odom took a blow, I mean, gave uh, Dirk Nowitzki a shot to the head, which was no good, and he got uh, ejected out of the game. Later on in the fourth quarter, J.J. Barea, who, by the way, got the uh, got the attention of Juan Artest in uh, Game 4, I mean, I checked that in Game 2. Uh, on his drive to the basket, he was in midair, and Andrew Bottom gave him an elbow to the ribs. And that also got him suspended, uh, ejected out of the game. So, it wasn't a real classy way of the Lakers to go out. But if you're a Laker fan, like I said, you should be disappointed, because the Lakers are a classy organization from top to bottom. Even Magic Johnson said that he was ashamed of what he saw. Both not of the whole game, the whole series, but how, how it ended with the uh, two players uh, uh, intending to injure Dirk Nowitzki and J.J. Barea. So with that in mind, uh, let's break down the Lakers' conclusion, and that's what it was, an implosion. Uh, if you want to take me bit by bit, the uh, two MVPs, the battle between Dirk and Kobe, it's safe to say that uh, Dirk outplayed Kobe Bryant. And yes, I'm saying that we all saw it, we're all witnesses, it's true. Uh, Dirk had two plus quarters. It was especially in the game one and two out west, where the Mavericks needed that, that little boost. Dirk Nowitzki came through on both those games. Not so much in uh, games three and four. He pretty much held court, up and, and he did uh, pump his average. As a matter of fact, four thousand average players in game four yesterday had double figures. Now I'll go deep in detail on, 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 on that. But nonetheless, uh, Dirk Nowitzki outplayed Kobe Bryant, and therefore the Mavericks outplayed uh, the Lakers as well. After all, we swept them four games to nil. Now. The Lakers, they have this mystique. So like when visiting teams take on the Dallas Cowboys, they got to take on the team, the mystique, the air of what uh, the atmosphere of what the uh, Cowboys are all about. Well, the Le Mavericks did the same thing with the Lakers out, taking the atmosphere of what Southern California basketball is all about. 
a lot of scars. Lot, and, and to be honest, Staples Center is really not a real intimidating place to play. I mean, the mystique and how the Hollywood brings to the table at Staples Center on any home night, uh, that's what the uh, scenes uh, go against. Mary's, I don't think, feared that. As a matter of fact, they just went in and said, it didn't matter. We're just go out and beat you two games, then we'll just sweep you in Dallas. And by gosh, they did. They weren't in awe of anything out there uh, about the Lakers and, and everything like that. Paul, and let's face it, Mavericks outplayed the Lakers. Paul Gasol was a no-show most of the night. Kobe had that 35-point game in game one, but where was he for the rest of the series? He was nowhere to be found. He had his moments, but he didn't dominate the action like they usually do. And he's one of the bigger, one of the best competitors in any any sport. Which, uh, and you know his uh, bold uh, promise, we will win three games to start the series and go out west and take game four, I mean game seven. Uh, he would be the type to actually make that statement and probably make a statement. The problem was the rest of the Lakers didn't exactly get on board with the idea as well. I think they were thinking about uh, tea time and going to uh, Cabo or wherever they uh, go on vacation. Their minds were focused on the game yesterday, which brings me to Phil Jackson. And this is not a good way for Phil Jackson to end his uh, coaching career. I mean, 11 uh, World Championships combining his uh, time with the uh, Chicago Bulls and the uh, Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, you would think he had a much better send-off. And you'd think his players would feel his uh, pain as well. I mean, we want to give our coach uh, another world title, even though we had to win four games to uh, beat the Mavericks or anything. They didn't come to us. As a matter of fact, using the analogy that we use for uh, Wade Phillips, not to compare Phil Jackson to Wade Phillips, it's all about preparation, getting your team ready. And watching that game yesterday, I don't think the Lakers were ready. I don't think they were prepared, mentally prepared, or, or anything. And to take, one, take it one step further, as an old coach once said, they didn't play with a lot of give a And the Lakers, I guess, really didn't, didn't give a damn about yesterday's game. Uh, the Mavericks pretty much outplayed them every, every aspect of the game. Offense, defense, bench had a big game. And, and, and speaking of the bench, let's get into the Dallas Mavericks a little bit. Jason Terry, the Jet, what a game, what a game. Nine out of ten on three-pointers. That ties an NBA record, by the way, for most three-pointers made in a game. 32 points overall for Jason Terry. I mean, he, he led off scores. He was, he, he was on fire yesterday. No one couldn't put him out no matter what. As a matter of fact, the Dallas Mavericks had four players in double figures. Jason Terry led the, led the way, J.J. Barea, Jason Stalkovic came in and uh, pumped in threes like there was no tomorrow. He helped out. Dirk Nowitzki had 17 points uh, total in the game, but uh, that's more, pretty much like an off day for him. But yeah, other people back him up, uh, they will let that slide. Dirk played a great game, great series, and we expect him to uh, play more of a better series uh, as we get into the uh, playoffs and uh, we'll talk more about who they might face in just a little bit. Don't call the announced Mavericks bench. Their bench outplayed the Lakers bench. No matter who they put in, they got production. It doesn't matter if it's Jet, Peja, JJ, it didn't matter. They got, they, let's see, they got production all of the way around once they put the uh, new bench, bench parts in. Uh, let's mention Tyson Chandler, his defense. They, he pretty much uh, took uh, uh, Paul Gasol out of the game. I mean, he was like a non-factor. And talk about a great find for the Dallas Mavericks in the offseason. They did the center. Tyson Chandler, who is a uh, Southern California native, he came to play. And I guess uh, Mommy and Dad and all the cousins were happy about that. And... Uh, if you if you go back to the Dallas Mavericks, back to that dreaded fourth game collapse against 
Portland. And we all said, this is it. Mavericks, this is the season. This is going to be the end. There was no way they could bounce back from this. Well, not only they bounced back, but they bounced back big. This is like a six-game playoff winning streak the Mavericks are on right now. And uh, they're a much different team. They're tougher. They're scrappier. They're playing with a bit of an attitude about themselves. They're, they're the ones that are playing with a lot of give a damn right now. Uh, and, you know, they're doing whatever it takes to get that reputation that they're soft and they don't have heart and they don't have this, don't have that. Right now, the Mavericks are sitting pretty and uh, I think those NBA uh, doubters that that the Mavericks will be a one and done team. I think they're beginning to change their minds a little bit. If you're looking for one cheerleader for the Mavericks right now, there's a guy named uh, Charles Burkley. Uh, you might have heard of him. NBA great. Works for TNT. He's been like the biggest Dallas Mavericks cheerleader so far this season. And uh, we'll see if he continues to be a cheerleader as the Mavericks continue on in the playoffs. Which brings me to what's ahead. Mavericks. They got either Memphis or Oklahoma City. Both teams will be rather difficult. One more difficult than the other. Memphis has beaten the Mavericks three out of four times this season. And uh, Zach Randolph, their main guy, uh, he's been like a Maverick killer. As a matter of fact, he had the winning shot in one of those games that beat the Mavericks at home. Uh, they're the eighth place of the seed that's making a lot of noise. If the Mavericks take on Memphis, it's like visiting a bad, bad moment. The Mavericks were the number one seed against Golden State about three years ago. And we all know what happened then. We don't need to remind you of that. Now, if you take on Oklahoma City, you might, you know. The Mavericks won them uh, beat the series two, uh, two out of three times. I mean, I, I feel kind of better uh, Oklahoma City, Dallas matchup like, as opposed to Memphis and Dallas. Memphis is on a roll, and they can give Mavericks problems. Oklahoma City, I think they're evenly matching the Mavericks. So, if it uh, comes down to who do you like in, in the uh, Western Conference Finals, as the Mavericks sit back and watch teams be up to each other. You know, I kind of want the uh, Oklahoma City Blazers. So deep down, I kind of want Memphis as like, the opportunity to get back at them, just to remind them that, which it did in the regular season. That was the regular season. Well, that's a different. And eventually that uh, Cinderella story from Memphis, the pumpkin is going to be uh, coming. The last slipper will shatter. And in uh, Memphis, it was a fun season. Pick up your t-shirts on your way out. Look, that's that's it for this uh, segment for which you like to call the 16. Like I mentioned, the Dallas Mavericks got eight wins in the book. But there are eight more wins left, and the most difficult eight to get as they try to push on to get an NBA title. And uh, this is a little update for you. Uh, and, uh, the and Celtics uh, and Heat uh, just to play in Chicago and, uh, and uh, Atlanta, who's also a surprise team. They're still playing as well. And uh, we'll keep a close eye on the Mavericks and, and also the other Western Conference playoff uh, series with uh, Oklahoma City. Memphis. Mavericks taking, looks like they're going to be taking a 10 day break. A lot of people thinking, you know, you don't need 10 days, they can rest, they might miss a lot of times, and the, the, the time is going to be off a little bit. When you get into a long line, especially the NBA playoffs, I mean, you welcome the break, you welcome the rest, and bodies and will heal up, bruises will heal up, sores will heal up. Uh, They'll be a much, Mavericks will be a much fresher team as they get back into the tournament. So, Mavericks, enjoy the break. You earned it. It's been a fun run, but the run is not done yet. Eight more wins to go. We'll see how it goes as the Mavericks prepare for the Western Conference Finals. And we will come back again as we update you on the Mavericks here on the 16th, 2011. Dallas Maverick playoff run as part of the Loops Action and More show right here on the Donnie Sports 17 Network on YouTube.
first in the all struggle, then it's all credit. See, back in the day, getting on was mad hectic. Looking for my start in hip hop, like Cedar and Sedley. I knew I loved music, I did spark the fuse lit. I had talent and knew it, but had yet to prove it. Yeah, I ran the ciphers and.